Jenny, do you want to take us through food allergy in general and the differences? Sometimes it can be a bit of a confusion because it's actually two separate pathways which are all come under the same heading of cow's milk allergy. The allergy that we sort of typify with a typical allergic response, rapid onset, and it can be things like skin symptoms, it can be things like digestive system with vomiting or diarrhea, but often it'll be associated particularly with rashes such as hives, those ones that look like little nettle rash. And it can also be associated with swelling to the area that's, that the, the milk has touched. Occasionally, we do see some children who have problems with breathing. Um, they might have a bit of a wheeze or a cough or a hoarse cry. And sometimes we actually see that it affects their circulation and that they can come quite floppy after and unresponsive after their initial ingestion of milk or their initial exposure. Now, this in turn is quite different from the second type of allergy response called the non-IgE. Non-IgE is also called delayed type response, it means that the symptoms can take up to sort of 48 hours to actually come on. So it's very difficult because there's no test as such for this type of reaction. Now in saying that the non-IgE reaction, what were we looking at? Well again, it can give you skin symptoms, particularly sort of itchy skin or non-specific rashes and it can also affect eczema so it can have an effect on eczema flares. I mentioned before with the IgE the effects that it has on the digestive system but the non-IgE also has an effect but it can be a bit more non-specific and so when I take a history I have to be quite specific when I'm asking a bit more detail about what sort of symptoms we're, that parents are seeing. So it might be sort of colicky symptoms, it might be reflux, a bit of vomiting Often we see a change in the stool consistency. That might be a bit more mucus or sometimes even blood seen mixed in. Now, sometimes it might be constipation. It can be a whole variety of things. The other thing that I think is interesting in paediatrics, I used to think that if a child wasn't gaining weight, that was significant. But I think what can be confusing is that children can still gain weight with non-IgE cow's milk allergy, but still have significant other symptoms. Now, I would just say that babies, they won't have the significant breathing problems that children with IgE-mediated food allergy have. So you can get with IgE allergy, it's much more rapid. You can see responses within sort of two hours. That's right. And I think that that's the key fact. That, that helps me determine whether we're looking at an, an IgE or a non-IgE. And I think a lot of people get confused because you often get people referring to intolerance, cow's milk intolerance. That's right. And so I try not to talk about intolerance because I think that just muddies the water when we're trying to work out exactly what's going on. And often it's just a little bit confusing, the terminology. So to be honest, when I'm talking to parents, I'll talk about IgE mediated responses, non IgE mediated responses, that's the rapid or the delayed onset. And they're all, they're both allergy. They that, are both under the term allergy. That's right. That's it. Yeah. So they're both allergies. Yeah. But they're kind of both very different. Different allergies. And I, I guess one of the big differences with IgE allergy, you can have tests for that whereas there are no tests, official tests for that's right. Other. That's right. So when I'm in clinic and if I have a history that sounds to me possibly an IgE, that immediate type of reaction, then I know that I've got a test that I can perform. And that most likely will be a skin prick test, which will give me an immediate response to let me know whether that child is likely to be have a, a cow's milk protein allergy. Now, the problem then comes in the delayed onset allergy. Because they I could still have cow's milk protein allergy, allergy can't they? That's yeah. right. Yeah. And yet yeah, I've got no test. And so the only test that we can do is when I ask for the help of my dietetic colleagues to look at how can we try um, excluding and that's our only test that we can do. Okay, so you basically would take the food out and see if they get better, reintroduce it to see if they get worse. That's right, absolutely. Okay. Yeah but all under the guidance of a dietitian. That's right, because I think it's to do it on your own can be a little bit daunting. And so I'd always seek the advice of a health professional before starting to do this. Um, but as far as reintroducing, um, we're not talking about reintroducing at home unless you've been advised to That's do right. that. That's right. I would definitely, I would never advise an IgE or a rapid onset cow's milk allergic child to perform this in the home setting. And that's really important, I need to reiterate. Great, that's fantastic, thank you. So IG mediated food allergy? So yeah, so this is, that, that's that um, immediate reaction that I've been talking about. 
um, we, we know the mechanism of action here. So that's why we're talking about IgE. IgE means immunoglobulin E. So it's, it's a specific um, protein that the body um, will make. Now, this is the one that will give you the immediate reaction, that reaction, that rapid onset. Usually it'll be minutes, to be honest. And often I'll see a reaction on the skin. That will be the thing that will really give me the idea that the, this may be IgE mediated, such as the hives. Or it can possibly be swelling, particularly on the lips where the, where the, the milk has actually touched the skin. The thing to say about this is that it can be life-threatening. So it's something that we have to take um, very seriously. And as soon as I hear that there is a child that has potentially a milk allergy, then I'd like to see them in clinic as, as soon as possible. The reason for this is that I can then perform the tests that I mentioned, those skin prick tests. We can either do a skin prick test or we can actually do some blood tests that also give us a clue. I mentioned before that we sh would not recommend that re-challenge that we'll do in the non-IgE food allergy. Children who've got an uh, immediate onset allergy, I would often prescribe them an EpiPen and we'd go through that in clinic and I'd explain the indications for use, when to use it, how it needs to be stored, how it needs to be carried. But this would all be under our guidance and so the information would be given with an allergy action plan so parents aren't on their own with this. They've got advice, that there's an advice line that they can contact us should they have any concerns and they'll be reviewed regularly in clinic to look at this in more detail. And to reiterate, not suitable for home child. Absolutely not. Thank you. What about the non-IG, just to summarise what we were saying so, before? So, uh, in a way, I, I wish we had slightly easier nom <laughs> how we name these things. So it's the non-IgE, so this doesn't involve that immunoglobulin E that I mentioned before. Unfortunately, the mechanism of action isn't completely known, which is probably why we've got no tests as yet. I mentioned before that it's a delayed reaction then that can take, it can be hours, but even up to a couple of days that we're looking at before symptoms arise, particularly with the skin symptoms, or it might be some of the gut symptoms, might take a couple of days. That's great. Thank you for that summary. And we've got the NICE guidelines from 2011 for allergy in children, haven't we, as yeah, well? Yeah, so I think that just goes through some of the, the symptoms that um, you may see in, in your baby. Um, it's quite nice and it defines the difference between the two, but you'll actually see there's quite a lot of crossover, which is why I, it's advisable to be seen by a health professional who can help sort of um, just try and uh, look at this in a bit more detail. Excellent.